this mass is offered to the departed souls of Matilda, Malcolm, Sebastian, Paul, Noble, and souls in purgatory. May the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, in today's gospel, we have the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. It is very interesting to know that rich man has no name, whereas poor man has a name called Lazarus, means God helps. Rich man had everything. He was preoccupied seeking happiness in material things rather than in God. He had given first place for wealth and not for God. As a result, at the end, he became a beggar and he was thrown into hell. Whereas poor man, Lazarus, was sick. The rich man was insensitive towards the poor, especially Lazarus. But poor man, Lazarus was rewarded heaven. Dear brothers and sisters, we live in a world where poor people walk miles to find the food, whereas the rich people walk to digest their food. Starvation, poverty was there at the time of Jesus. It is existing even now. Let us introspect our life. How many times we have helped poor people, the sick people, Lent is the time to help the poor, the sick, the needy. To celebrate this Eucharist in a worthy manner, let us remember our sins and ask God's pardon. I confess. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself, that caught up in the fire of your spirit, we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in our works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this, a curse on the man who puts his trust in man, who relies on things of flesh, whose heart turns from the Lord. He is dry, he is like dry scrub in the wastelands. If good comes, he has no eyes for it. He settles in the parched places of the wilderness, a salt land uninhabited. A blessing on the man who puts his trust in the Lord, with the Lord for his hope. He is like a tree by the waterside that thrusts its roots to the stream. When the heat comes, it feels no alarm. Its foliage stays green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never ceases to bear fruit. The heart is more devious than any other thing, perverse too. Who can pierce its secrets? 
I, the Lord, search the heart. I probe the loins to give each man what his conduct and actions deserve. The word of the Lord. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in dry season, in due season and whose leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Not so are the wicked, not so. For they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. All together, praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I will leave this place and go to my Father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate, there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In his torment, in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, pity me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son Abraham replied, Remember, that during your life, good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now he is being comforted here while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone if he wanted to crossing from our side to yours and to stop any crossing from your side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house, since I have five brothers to give them warning so that they do not come to this place of torment too. They have Moses and prophets said, Abram, let them listen to them. Oh no, Father Abram, said the rich man. But if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to them, said to him, If they will not listen either to Moses or to the prophets, they will not be convinced if even if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord.
blessed are you lord god of all creation for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. By this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify us our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about we make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affection, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be caused to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say him. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray may this sacrifice o lord remain active in its effects and work ever more strongly within us we make this prayer to christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit almighty god bless us the father and the son and the holy spirit amen. go and announce the gospel of the lord 